Hey, it's Francis, and um, I'm going to be doing some live streaming, um, and I'm going to be trying to make a uh, beat for the Crypt Hop compilation that's coming up. Uh, I was pretty excited when Luke announced that he was uh, putting another one together, and um, so I am going to explore some ideas and see if I can make a dungeon synth track that will translate well into sort of becoming a hip-hop track, which is basically what Cryptop is going after. It's sort of like witch house, um, dark ambient, genres like that is essentially where we're aiming. So um, I'm listening to uh, that remix that I made a few weeks ago on one of my videos and um, thinking about what I could do better this time. And I think that I want um, a more pronounced bass line. Um, I think that I want um, some more like dungeon -y drums. I was thinking of like anvil samples, stuff like that. Um, and I don't know, I guess we'll see where we go. I was thinking of maybe going a little bit more hi-fi tonight also. Maybe I'll change my mind later. Anyway, let's jump into uh, Reaper. And I'm just gonna get rid of this. <laughs> and um, start auditioning some sounds. Um, I already pulled up um, a track for drums here. These are some samples that I like. Kind of for my hip hop part of my sounds. Um, these are from samples from Mars. These are the, uh, I think, MPC 60 samples. There's tons of stuff, 808s, 909s. It's a 909 snare, I love that. Probably not for this track. Um, and I'm going to see if I can explore some other stuff on the Moog. I think I'm gonna use this for low bass. Maybe a snappy envelope would be good. And I love those pulse waves for the um, low bass. Um, compared to a saw. Um, that'll probably be a good starting point for the synth. And I'm going to use the Mellotron. Um, I really like the idea of like a really uh, sort of a trippy um, Celeste part. And um, you know what? I'm going to send this through some hardware. Um, I need to label my inputs. I need to reorganize all my inputs. Uh, I think it's probably like in five and six. I don't know. Echo, reverb. So, um, I, don't, I haven't done a video on this, but if you're in Reaper and you want to use hardware, um, you got to have outputs for the hardware, obviously, but um, I'm going to send to... Oh, it's 3-4. I know, it's what's plugged in here. I'm trying to remember where, I, where I'm sending this back in. I feel like it's input 5 and 6 or something. Yeah, I think this is right. Oh, ho, ho. that's going in pretty hot. Um, let's pull this back for now. Actually, let's take all this stuff down a few notches. 
I like doing this uh, stuff with hardware because you can do like. Uh, you can adjust some of the settings on the fly and just bake them in. Um, and it just speeds up your workflow. You get a little bit less precision, but um, sometimes there's some magic in that lack of precision. That's pretty cool. All right. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> What's wrong with listening to both? You never put on two albums at the same time? <laughs> um, I used to. So um, I don't know if anyone that watches this will be familiar with Charles Ives, um, a relatively important 20th century composer, um, sort of credited with... Um, advancements in polytonality, I guess you'd call it, du duotonality. I'm not sure if which one you would describe that as, but he would write music that was in more than one key at the same time and uh, didn't really get started publishing music till after he retired um, his, from his career as, a, uh, as an insurance salesman, I believe. And um, he's in music, text, music history textbooks now, so... It's never too late to start <laughs> if you feel like making some art, um, you know, have a fulfilling career in something else and switch over. But um, anyway, uh, the piece to look up is the unanswered question. That's like the really famous one as far as famous goes in, in the context of art music. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's like a really like vibrant um, string orchestra with a trumpet that's playing in a different key. Um, and I think that it, it was generally performed with the trumpet player off stage, so it was like something's wrong. What's going on? Uh, kind of a fun idea. But um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I thought it would be fun to uh, when I first heard of him to just listen to two songs at the same time. So I'd always listen to two albums at the same time and see if I could find places where they line up and where I'd get ideas from that. Um, and it didn't yield very much. It was just kind of an experiment. But. What does this feel like? That's pretty neat. I feel like something's not quite right with this synth patch. I can't figure out what it is. Oh, <laughs> my um, my amp em envelope was not set right. Yeah, that's better. Now it's just gonna slap every single time. Cool. Um, I kind of want that to be ultra mega accurate, so um. I might create a track to control that with MIDI. So I'm going to essentially um, make a sequence here with no input. And the idea with this is that it would send to the um, to the Moog. And um, I have to set this up. This is not wired correctly right now. Um, I think that the Moog is actually in channel one. Yeah, cool. There we go. So now this is controlling the hardware and I can mess with this. Okay, nice. Um, and now I'm thinking um, uh, of tempo. Something like... Something fast, <laughs> nice, 69 BPM, okay. Um, okay, um, let me experiment with some other stuff here. Um, I should color code these together. 
And um, I might just explore some ideas for a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna hit record with a click on. And see if I uh, like anything. You know what? Um, I'm gonna go 140. I, want, I like my grid to be double time. That's just a habit. Okay, starting point. Um, the big problem with using these um, hardware uh, <laughs> hardware uh, echo is that you kind of have to let it uh, finish discharging its um, its sound before you stop the recording. Otherwise, you slice it off. Um, and let's just see what it feels like. Boom. and creepy. Um, it's working though. I'm thinking the same note here. It's sort of outline and chord. feeling okay nice um so as a starting point i'm relatively happy with this i kind of want some something that's a little bit more of a um a pad against this and i feel like this um synth doesn't need to be there right away that might be better if it's paired with the drum beat good to just beatbox along with your stuff. Um, for now, I'm going to just see what happens if I throw a drum beat in. Um, whoops, that was the wrong one. Um, that's the drums right here. Um, That's a pretty good one. Excuse the sound of these. They're um, on the keys right below my microphone, so. Man, these 909 snares just sound like clouds. I'm gonna just try laying down a kick and a snare here. See what happens. Vaguely, vaguely. 
And this kind of needs to be uh, quantized, I guess. Ew, these are just really far apart, aren't they? Um, let's quantize that to a relatively... Okay, so I'm actually getting some latency here. Um, I think that's because of, um, of my stream going. That's disappointing. Um, if I bypass content, does that still happen? Shoot. Um, I'm not sure what happens if I change my, um, my um, preferences during a live stream. It might break. Let's That's a little bit better. Still enough latency to be a problem. And now I can hear the latency in my voice. I don't think I helped. Okay, well, we're just gonna tolerate that. And for now, um, I'll record the, the Moog um, later. And for now, I'm gonna put, um, You know what? I think I've got a track template that's just like live stream, uh, live stream Moog. Dungeon Reaper base. I think Dungeon Mini is the one. And I'm gonna turn off this stuff. And for now, this will just be in here. I could have also just done a bad job here. Yeah, I totally did a horrible job recording these. These should pretty much all be um, on the nearest quarter note. Yeah, I just quantized these on a, in a bad way. That was my bad. Um, I think these can be quantized to the nearest quarter also. Hey William, how's it going? Oh, you know what happened? I just completely ruined everything, didn't I? Um, I'm just gonna re record these. See what happens. that maybe better good thanks you i'm doing great um and um jamie the cryptop compilation is um a friend of mine puts together uh, compilation albums uh let me see if i can actually i'll i'll link you to it um this is the cryptop compilations a friend of mine puts these together and it's basically a combination of dungeon synth and hip-hop and um, it reminds a lot of people of like Witch House and genres like that. Um, and I think it usually ends up being pretty cool. So um, I am just, um, I, I've been planning to make a submission for the current um, comp a compilation that's going to come out in, I think, a few months. Um, and I thought, um, you know, what, what better way to start than to do it on live stream when I'm 
sort of motivated to actually be doing something. <laughs> so here we are uh, getting started with it. I'm definitely not going to finish this one tonight. Um, but um, hopefully I'll have some cool ideas down. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm working on. I have such a tendency to um, to be early, right before the beat when I'm doing um, finger drums. I don't do that when I'm on a drum kit for some reason. Look at how early all of this is. Um, anyway, that's that's the vibe I've got going right now, and I'm not sure how into it I am. Um, it's okay, um, but I want to have this sort of go for a while without drums. So I'm going to explore, um, let's see. Let's make another track of Mellotron um, and see what Mellotron flutes feel like. Flutes. Um, one of my favorite, favorite things to do with uh, for pads is uh, half tape speed on the Mellotron. Let me show you what that sounds like. Um, I'm actually gonna run this through the same echo. So I think I, I said that was, oh my God, my mouse died, I think. That's not good. Um, there it is, okay. That's why some people don't use wireless mouses. <laughs> Dies during live stream, terrible. Anyway, I think that was on output three, four. And I guess I need to make another track for the, I'll just duplicate this track. And I'll pair those by color. I guess I should do that with this one as well. Oops. Um, maybe not the same color. So now this hopefully is sending signal out here. I'm gonna have a little bit more reverb on this and a little bit washier delay. Um, so this is half tape speed Mellotron. I'm gonna roll the tone back quite a bit too. It's just like really pretty glorious. Hey, Infected, um, I'm doing good. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Or wherever you are in the world today, I'm not sure. It's about 8 p.m. where I am. I guess that's not even a universal time measurement, is it? Um, what is that, 20 o'clock? Um, okay, I need to kill that. And I'm going to loop this section and just experiment with um, with what kind of pad stuff feels good. I also think that I'm going to do this section without the bass. So I need to see if the pad works just with this other, other item. I kind of like it already. for William and infected both of you. What is that East Coast time? Oh, or you're in South America, right? I'm forgetting. I forget. I forget the usernames. Remind me where you all are if you if you're comfortable sharing that information that is. <laughs>
think I'm going to run with that. Um, I'm going to record that real quick and see how it feels in the recording. Maybe this will discharge it. I wonder if there's a panic button on this unit. I'm still pretty new to this hardware um, unit that I'm using for the delay and reverb. Um, across that bar line partially because I want to I want this to be just a loop um, so I feel like the loop kind of needs an extra measure if I want this to work and I think that I can loop it there and the reason for that is because I'm I have that um, delay and reverb baked in so I'm thinking that I'll loop properly uh, it'll still be a little weird but with a crossfade it might be fine um, hopefully it's fine anyway um, yeah, that's acceptable to my ear. And um, America, North Carolina, East Coast. Cool. Okay. Well, welcome to the stream. Thanks for dropping by. Um, man, I haven't been to North Carolina in years. I kind of like that place, but then again, I, I probably spent most of the time in, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, what's it called? Asheville, the Moog town. Moogtown, USA. I would have just lived in that um, in that factory if they let me. Um, the place is pretty cool. I've been to other other parts of there, but um, that was like that's my um, memory. It's the way that like you know when people visit your town, they they remember like that one brewery or coffee shop. And for North Carolina, I remember the Moog factory because it was um, I um, I ordered this. And um, then I was in North Carolina when it was in transit, and I was at the Moog factory, and I was like, I just bought one of those. And they were like, congratulations, thanks for your money. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I think that um, aside from everything, I mean, everything else aside, um, I, when I've got viewers on the streams and I'm working on music, it sort of keeps me moving forward and it, it saves me from some of the, um, the um, indecisiveness that I end up running into when I'm uh, working by myself. So I think that's helpful and I appreciate that from everyone that's watching. Uh, you may not know that you are actually making me work more efficiently, but you are. <laughs> Here's what we're doing next. Um, whether or not it needs it, I promised an uh, anvil, and I already looked it up. Anvil. So let's listen to some of the anvils in my sample library. Ho, 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 ho. That's not an anvil. That's. Jesus. <laughs> That's the one right there. <laughs> um, I use Contact. I also use Resamplematic. Uh, this is the Reaper sampler. It's great. It's a lot more um, resource efficient than Contact. Um, and when you're only doing a one shot, um, I mean, can't go wrong. Um, so what this is going to let us do is um, it's going to let us use MIDI to trigger uh, this sample. And um, hopefully that is just what the doctor ordered. I'm going to try to put this in a place where it's not covering covered up by my face. Um, let's just make a short sequence. I don't even need that much, do I? 
That's, that's it. <laughs> and print. <laughs> Hopefully that's not blasting everyone too loud. I'm sure it is, but um, it's not gonna stay that loud for long. This sample is actually quite loud. It doesn't need to be that loud at all. I'll pull it down like minus six. Minus six is like my starting point. Um, and I think we're going to ignore a mini note. Let's just hear what it sounds like uh, pitch shifted. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to leave it pitch shifted. I'm, I've got a, a use for a few of these. Um, I'll use Contact Player, but there aren't good libraries for Dungeon Synth. Um, I, I think that there are some good libraries for Dungeon Synth. You just have to sort of dig for them. The problem with Contact Player is that because it's like a free player, there's tons of... Um, uh, there's just ton, uh, there's too much stuff. Like You have to sort through all the, all the BS... Um, that people are trying to hawk on you. Um, any of the sounds I use, uh, I make contact libraries of, of quite a few of them actually. Um, and if you're interested, I haven't like organized them in such a way that they're like commercial libraries by any means, but um, I'd be happy to share them. Um, again, it's not really that many of my sounds uh, that are currently contact libraries, but I try to make a point of creating contact libraries out of some of them. And um, I mean, they're going to they're going to be um, generally commercially unavailable um but free if you contact me and ask me for them contact <laughs> um as long as i'm not as long as i don't have them ready to sell i'm not going to be selling them um and i've got like google drive links for those if you if you're interested i'll dig them up um i'll show you uh, why don't i use um one or two of them in, in this track and you can see if you want any of the ones i made i only made three that i think are like shareable so far and everything else I've done has been like kind of an experiment but three there's three of them that I've actually come back and used for tracks that actually sound good um, um I think we're gonna oh you know what we need is um let's set the max voices to one here that way it replaces itself Okay, I'm liking that. Um, let's just make this a lot shorter. I'm gonna make this snappier. And I want that to be filtered. Um, um, oh, let's use an EQ. It's got a lot of low end I can pull out as well. That's way better. I actually like that. Um, let's hear that combined with that drum beat. Oh, I didn't quantize the drums. That's fine. Okay, um, turning the drums off again. Let's call that Anvil. <laughs> Amityville Horror. <laughs> Anvil Horror. Uh, cool. And this is just going to be part of a drum bus, I think. Um, per, perks, and I'm gonna just stack these in here, and all this stuff uh, gets its own color. This is my favorite thing up here the custom buttons. I just get so much mileage out of this. Um, okay, I promised, um, what did I say? Contact libraries. Um, contact, contact, contact. Let's do, um, my ELZ piano. This is my favorite one for Dungeon Synth. Uh, well, it's not. I have two that I really like for Dungeon Synth. Um, and if only I could just find them. It's all the samples from Mars stuff. That's a great deal when they're on sale. Um, one of the best values on the internet is the um, is the samples from Mars. Um, once a year, they'll do a sale that's just like buy everything for like forty bucks, and it's like a staggering, like unfathomable amount of samples. Um, this is the one. 
Oh God, how, where is it organized? I, I don't know how to organize contact libraries yet. I haven't been doing them that long and I haven't tried to, um, make them commercial. <laughs> so this is the, oh, I guess the input needs to be MIDI. one it's got some really thunderous low end it's got some nice aliasing i think it's nice at least so if you listen in the really high end high register i'm not sure how well it translates to the stream but you can hear the um, aliasing that the noise in the top end it's very lo-fi but like in a in a way that i think is appropriate for dungeon synth And that aliasing really builds up when you have a lot of notes. It's got that snappy attack. I don't know. Yeah, it does. Um, I, I tried to make it sound like a Rhodes piano combined with like a, it's like an 8-bit Rhodes. Um, I'm still trying to get the build up down. You got to turn the volume of it down a bit if you want it to work really well. But let's just hear what this sounds like in the track. Oh, you know what? You know what might be better is the other sample in this library. I don't even know how that works sometimes and it doesn't other times. Um, these are both made from the same synth. And um, this is like a synth that I enjoy, but these are the only two sounds I would use from it. I sound designed both of them myself, so. This one's just like really cool, I think. Like, I think that's just delightful. And I use this one a lot. You'll hear this in uh, a few of my releases. Um. Okay, let's hear what this sounds like in context. Whoops, I gave myself a four count. So I use a, a really good Rhodes VST if you're looking for one. Oh, Lounge is it's great. I've, I have used that one actually. Um, that is one of the, well, it's one of the best Rhodes VSTs. I, um, I don't, think I have it on this computer, but um, I I don't do a ton of Rhodes sounds, and I don't remember what the Rhodes library, I have a Rhodes library on here that's okay. I've got two or three of them, actually. Uh, I think the Rhodes electric piano is like one of the, one of the instruments of all time. <laughs> I just love it. I think it's a beautiful sound. I'm going to support this. that low sound. This is basically just noise with a bandpass filter. Okay. And I'm happy with that. It's a decent performance. I'm gonna get this to, I'm actually, uh, so I'm doing this uh, right here, making an edit that we won't really hear, sort of unnecessary edits. Um, these are gonna make it just enormously easier to loop. We can just slice the edges off and um, be pretty surgical with it in that way. Um, and then hopefully it'll loop real clean. Rhodes is great for lo-fi beats. You know what I wish there was is um, more music for solo Rhodes, like, um, and I just like, um, I feel like people that play Rhodes pianos play like, um, like lounge music and jazz too much. And it's such a good, it's like the best instrument for dark ambient music. <laughs> it just really is. Um, 
uh, hazy morning. I changed to hazy morning from piano. Um, let me see here if I've got the um, link to those instruments for you. Um, if you want them. Um, yeah, um, I think it's this. Copy link. Get link. Cool. Yeah, uh, here's that. Here's those two sounds. Um, I've got another one in here, but uh, I don't think it's worth sharing. It's not very dungeon synthy at all. Those two, I think, are usable for dungeon synth, though. Um, let's see here. What does this feel like? Is this still lagging? Hey, Jamie. I'm wearing like it's like a kimono, I think. Um. And I'm wearing a um, the coolest band shirt of my any of my bands ever. I think these are out of print. I need to get them done again. They sell like hotcakes whenever they're around. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, I think it's off to a great start. Um, I think that what I want though is sort of a um, like a. Not that I want. Why is that one? Oh, duh. It's it's not it's not a software instrument. It's hardware. Something like that, maybe. Um, I'm just going to record this over here and I'm not, I don't have a song structure yet, which is why I'm just kind of recording everywhere. All, uh, willy nilly as it were, um, making sure nothing else is record armed, sort of like step one, do whatever you want. Step two, try to organize it. Um, I think that if there's one thing that leads to like writer's block. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, um, when you need everything to be structured from the get go. Um, you're not going to be creative unless you are willing to have absolutely no structure. So, um, I mean, you can be sometimes, um, and I've seen it happen, and it's happened with me before, but as a general rule, I find that uh, the big sources of writer's block is uh, having expectations for <laughs> the finished product and um, trying to organize things as you go. If you have expectations, you're going to stop working on stuff when anything you do it doesn't meet your expectations, and that doesn't mean it's bad. It means it's not the right thing, and um, I find that it's a lot easier to be creative if you're comfortable with the idea of like, I'm going to make a hip hop track, and you end up with like a heavy metal song. Um, if you're willing to end up with a different result or a different outcome, you're not going to be um, scaring yourself out of being creative. And then um, whatever the other thing I said, <laughs> I already forgot. Um, um, oh, just starting anywhere, not or not worrying about organization. It's really helpful. Get that high end click out of the kick if you can. Short attack, low pass EQ. Um, I I'm gonna I'll think about that. I'm I'm not sure. Um, the thing about kicks is that what the kick sounds like to me doesn't really matter. Um as long as it works in the context of the mix. And since I don't know what the mix is yet, I'm not going to worry about the kick yet uh, because I'm not sure what instruments are even going to be in the final version of this. Um, and there's a chance that um, there's going to be a lot of space for the kick. Um, and then in that case, I'll probably filter it out and, uh, and do like a low pass. Um, and um, if the if the track ends up being quite busy, I'm I'm gonna want that click so that the kick sticks through. And um the other thing is that like um depending on how busy the track is, I'm gonna do some cheating and like sometimes it's sometimes you can just like find where your kicks are. Like there's a kick here. And what you can do is just like grab all this stuff and 
just like say there's a kick there so that's all that's there and there's no kick there right now actually uh this is muted and then just like <laughs> you feel like you're tripping over the kick now um but again, we don't need to do that unless there's just a great deal of stuff in the arrangement. Uh, hey, Camilo, how's it going? Yeah, it's like um, if you took a, a side chain, although the concept of side chain is like, it, it, what is it? It's that you, you're compressing something with, um, instead of using that thing as the source for the, the input of the compression, you're using anything else. And basically what that does right is it turns down the anything else to favor the uh, usually it's like a kick or like a voiceover or something like that um but um the thing that like i just don't see people doing it it's, well i do and when people do it it makes their track sound better a track that wants that side chain sound you can write that into the arrangement like there's uh, what's stopping you from making the bass line instead of and you hear that in genres like synth wave um, where they just like assume that your ear is going to get tricked into thinking the notes there and they just leave the note out when there's a kick or a snare it's and you hear beatboxers do that uh, a really good beatboxer will imitate that and um, you can learn from that and do that in, in your productions and if you want like that really like slap super hard like trap recordings, dubstep, um, synth wave, any of these electronic genres that just really slap, you really uh, go a long way by doing that. Um, I think you can do that in, in heavy metal. You just don't hear it as much. Oh, cool. You do that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and um, doo -doo 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 -doo. where was I? <laughs> that sound, that um, anvil is really wild. I kind of want this to have like a hilarious amount of reverb or something. Cheap reverb. This is a good one. Um... <laughs> um... Take out more low end out of that after. Uh, use side chain and so it takes up the sound of any effects. Yeah, um, exactly. You you do that and you put the you put the side chain on it and the side chain will like um, will like squeeze out you know the the um, the reverb tails and the delay tails and stuff like that and you get that really punchy tight sound which can be really cool. Uh, I actually don't think that sound is super appropriate in like dungeon synth though, for example. Um, in sort of like a dungeon synth hip hop over uh, like a crossover, uh, it maybe it's a bit more appropriate, but um, again, it's just like I'll prescribe that if the track needs it. And then this, I don't want this following at all. Um, Um, I'm leaving out little bits here because um, I don't have my I, I, I like I don't like um, recalibrating my Moog. Um, you can calibrate it so that the so that you get the envelope to trigger again when you're holding a note down, or you can calibrate it like like I have it now where it's where it uh, has that legato mode. And I like the legato mode, but when you're um, programming with MIDI. Um, that space isn't enough time to um, re-trigger it, so it doesn't really sound like anything. So I like to, I have to leave little gaps if I do that. Um, do something like this. I'll have to 
experiment with that. Uh, maybe a little more filter. Oh, Witch House, yeah. It's, it, the side chaining type stuff is so good in Witch House. Um, really want to get an analog synth that don't have the space or money for one. Um, yeah, the space is the big thing. Uh, there's some really incredible ones for a relatively low price. Um, this is probably like the most absurd, over the top thing you can get. Like these are like thousands of dollars. Um, and um, I definitely like in no way, shape, or form recommend starting with that. Um, you want to, I've owned so many synths and this is sort of where I ended up. This is like the sound that I like and I eventually decided to invest in that. But um, what you're not seeing here is like like probably a dozen synths that I've bought and sold um, leading up to this one as like my main mono synth. Um, and um, yeah, there's some um, really good affordable uh, analogs and you sort of have to decide what, what am I getting an analog for. And uh, I think the best thing to start with is uh, analog mono uh, to use uh, for bass sounds. And um, as a starting point, I wouldn't get anything more expensive than like a Moog Grandmother. And that's those are $1,000 new. Um, you can get them used for like seven or 800 bucks. They're, um, I would say every bit as good as this, which, and these uh, these are out of, out of, out of, um, uh, production and uh, I see these on reverb for like five to eight thousand dollars now and it's just like I should sell this and buy something that costs a lot less but at the same time I got it when it was a lot cheaper than that and um, and I like the sound of it so if it's going to cost that much to buy it again I'm going to try to keep it for the rest of my life <laughs> and um, basically um, it just sounds different not really better or, or worse and um, Moog Mini Tour is a really really good bass uh, synth for an analog, and those you can find used for four hundred dollars sometimes. Um, even lower price than that is the um, Dreadbox Typhon. I think those are like two or three hundred bucks, um, and those are phenomenal. Um, Arturia makes some pretty good ones too. If you like a more modern sound, uh, Arturia Mini Brute is a really good one. Micro Brutes are actually sound phenomenal. They, I hate the keybed on them, but they sound really good, and those are like. You can get used ones for like 150 bucks, um, and you know the the list goes on and on. But um, I was actually thinking of <laughs> so check this out. I'm thinking of doing like a synth shopping stream where I buy a synth on live stream, and I think it's a terrible idea because I'm going to be pressured into buying something fancy. Um, but um, in doing so, I could like go through some options and things that I like, uh, and I thought that might be helpful. Just like how to shop for a synth. There's not, there will never be enough videos like that. Hey, Arctic and Panda, welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I should be making music. I'm, I'm talking about synthesizers. That's like um, all I do. I, <laughs> I just love talking about synthesizers. I get excited about them. <laughs> This one right here, I kind of want that, like, boo, doo, doo, doo. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Do, 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 do. What have I done? Um... I feel like this is going to be bad. Yeah, in fact, so this is this other synth that I want that's also thousands of dollars and I'm really close to buying it. I think I might do it. 
And I think that would be a really funny way to like, uh, if people weren't expecting that in the live stream, if I like spend like four thousand dollars on some fucking crazy synth, like <laughs> people would love that. Um, people love watching people spend money that isn't theirs. Um, and I can't really afford that, but I saved up for it. I, I actually I saved up like four grand for this synth, and then as soon as I had the money, I like looked at it and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I think I should probably not uh, not buy this. <laughs> what if my car breaks down? What if what if life happens? <laughs> I can pretend like I'm responsible and I've saved money instead of just spending all my hard earned money on. <laughs> like I, oh god, I really want it. Ugh. I could get a cheaper one. I could get a cheaper one. Okay, um, I think what I want to do here is to go back into this drum track and quantize it. Um, and I want this, I guess we've got eight notes is the closest. And then I, I guess what I've got to do here is quantize and just see if these got to the right spot. They look like they're pretty close, um, and those should all be pretty much on the same. Yeah. Okay, let's see if this feels okay. getting there. Um, what does this need? I don't know how to produce anything related to hip hop without using a Pultec clone. Um, this is the one I have. Any of them are good enough. Don't buy one of these if you use Logic. Um, Logic has a Pultec clone built in that's really good. Uh, I don't think any other DAW has a good Pultec clone. Uh, watch, there's probably one in Reaper um, in the JS plugins, huh? Um, I bet I bought this and I didn't have to. I didn't even think about that. There's so much stuff in the JS plugins. Something EQ. EQ. Network compressor. MIDI EQ Docker. I feel like a 2B EQ. I don't know anything. If, if you use Reaper and you know of a a plugin that copies a pull tech, let me know. Um, <laughs> just please don't, I appreciate that, Infected. Please don't spell what you can't. Um, a lot of people really like watching, <laughs> like watching the world burn from the other side of the fence. <laughs> and yeah, I, um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna feel pressured into buying something that I can't afford. Um, Jamie, yeah, totally. Um, especially when you don't absolutely need the thing. Like, I mean, I, I literally just spent that much money, um, more, more money than that. Um, like eight months ago, I think six months ago, I, I, I bought a, um, I bought a car. Um, I needed to, I needed a car. Uh, I, it was, it was time. I, I, I had already sold my vehicle. Um, and I was using the transition period when I wasn't, uh, pandemic time, like when I was wasn't driving to work any job, I was like, this is the perfect time to sell my sell my van and buy a car. I've been meaning to buy something fuel efficient. And it's just like it was really easy to find. Like once I found a good deal on a car, I just you know I'd saved the money for the for the car. I'd been thinking about it for a few years, and uh, and I bought it. And I spent like you know it's like what does used car cost? I think it was six thousand dollars or something like that. And it was it was just such an obvious choice because it was a good deal on the thing that I'd been planning to buy for a few years that I actually needed at that, at that point. Like I, I had already sold my other vehicle and I don't live in a walkable city. Uh, but now it's like a synth and it's like, oh, 
<laughs> well, what, what's wrong with the synths we have at home? <laughs> And the synths we have at home, it's not, it's not like the meme where they suck. It's like, I've got some pretty badass stuff in here. I just really, really speed up my workflow when I've got hardware. It just like, just, it's so immediate. And I've got room for one more synth on my, on my setup here. And I've been planning on getting a poly synth. And the thing is, I just have expensive tastes. Um, I haven't found one yet that's less than 2,500 bucks that I like. And the one, the, the ones that I want are uh, between three and four thousand. Um, the ones that it would be really cool to have, like in a perfect world, are you know, there's some poly synths that are great that are like ten to twenty thousand. It's just they're huge and they're unruly and they're expensive as fuck. And I'm never gonna buy those unless I like, you know, win the lottery or something. Even then, I don't know where I'd put them. Um, anyway, what I'm doing here with this Poltec is um, I am. Um, doing going into like bass boosted mode basically it's just like you go down to your sub frequencies down here 20 or 30 hertz um with a relatively um conservative bandwidth and you boost and cut uh attenuate is cut in the same frequency and um it just essentially colors that frequency in with um the character of the saturation of the tubes that the poltex are famous for um this is obviously not have vacuum tubes in it it's a, it's a computer program but uh, it does a great job of emulating it it's uh, about as close as you can get there's a couple of other plugins that are really really similarly good um but it's one of those things where you won't really hear it until i bypass it i like to boost somewhere in the high end high mids too So I always try to mix into a Poltec when I'm doing hip hop um, or some other genres too. I, I just love it. It's like the best effect. Um, okay, so this is actually feeling pretty solid at this point. Um, I think I might I might use this as a as a sort of a launch pad for my um, for my track. Um, I want this whole vibe to go for a long time before the drums come in though. So what I might do is just. Let's try pulling all this stuff over. I guess I need to make sure this starts. For, yeah, it's a little early. I just want to make these loopable. Make that loop. These are going to be bye bye. Um, and this, what is this one right here? Oh, I never even did that other thing I was going to try recording. Let me do that right now. I was going to do something like that. Let's see how that feels. Something like that. There's probably a way to discharge that. I need to read the manual. <laughs> what am I doing? I can just record this, um, the echo separately. It's on a, that's why it's on a send. Okay. Uh, 
I was just thinking to myself the other day um, that given the current state of the music industry, I should be I should be making loops, not songs. These would sell. Um, and then, as always, I'm just early, so. end of the loop and the beginning of the loop hopefully is right 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 um i'm just gonna go through and i'm visually looking for um transients here and just seeing where do i stop being super early because i know i end up on time somewhere um, i usually do uh this is just all early isn't it wow at least i'm consistently off there we go um And I'm just going to see if I can find an edit there. Cool. It's a good edit point. And then this, we got crossfade. And that crossfade will go right here. Okay. That sounds pretty good. And then this one right here will be there. Okay, now this is loopable, and um, this is going to be glued. So now that's my Tron loop for the other part of the song, and hopefully that just sort of works. Um, let's go down here. Okay. Okay, and now I'm just going to record the... <laughs> bake this reverb into it. Oh, ha! <laughs> I just realized I'm sending to this from um, somewhere else too, this track. I'm gonna mute that send. Now I can play with the uh, echo speed. <laughs> Is that too much? <laughs> um, it's never too much because I can just take this track and do something else with it. Um, so, um, so I might do that. That's cool. Oh, I think I like that. Okay. This I'm going to slice in the same place. And um, now these can sort of work together. Let's see. This needs to be... I think I need to do the same kind of thing here and um, loop it further out. That's one measure. Is that one measure? Okay, right there. Well, let's make the loop go there. And then these are going to be separated. And again, the reason I'm doing this is so that um, my um, echo and reverb channel is staggered since I'm baking this in. And yeah, that should sound like Yeah, that's tolerable. Nice. And then this right here can go let's zoom back out of these a little bit. New part. And um, hopefully this can just kind of like bleed together. <laughs> yeah, in fact, we will, we will, we will. <laughs> That's exactly what that sounds like. It reminds me of, have you seen uh, the film um, Kung Pao Enter the Fist? 
<laughs> wee wee wee. <laughs> That's that's what that sound is. It's that uh, the dungeon synth version of that. And speaking of which, I think I want to filter this echo and reverb a bit. Um, I'm in the instruments category. That's what's going on. Um, I always like to put a uh, sort of like a high pass filter on my um, echo and reverb channels. And uh, in this case, I want a low pass filter as well. Um, let me just see what this. Where am I? Ooh, you know what would be cool? Is giving it like a... Um, something like a... Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna duplicate this um, and I'm gonna make this warble between the left and right channels. Um, the filters will just move around. That'll be cool. Um, so, one of them needs to be on the right channel only. And the other one needs to be on the left channel only. And then, basically, that needs to be modulated with an LFO. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> That's so disorienting. Okay, and I want this to be tempo synced. Um, uh, one of them will be at a quarter note. And um, strength can be different. How about half a quarter note? How about two quarter notes? Okay, that's pretty good. This one, uh, same deal, gets parameter modulation. Uh, and I want to sort of replicate this, come pretty similar to the same thing, um, something like that. I don't want it to be exact, um, and I want one of them to be twice as fast, I think. No, you know what, 1.5. I want them to be offset from each other, basically. Um, and strength, let's go 47. Something like that, <laughs> five, two, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Wow, that's horrifying. Um, this will be, you know, 1.1. 1. 1. This will be 2, 1.9. Oh, no, 1.95, 1 1.05. 1 and what I want there is for them to be kind of offset from each other. And let's hear what that sounds like in context. Pretty weird. Um, oh, hey, in fact, um, yeah, um, so I don't know um, very much about Discord yet. I'm learning it. So I haven't made like a public join link yet because I don't know how to automatically moderate it. And um, I don't know, I, I just want to make sure that I'm keeping that community um, relatively um, moderated until I learn how to use the, the, the thing more. So I haven't um, shared the link much outside of um, outside of my friends group. Um, however, if you promise to be nice to everyone, <laughs> I can send you an invite. Um, and I don't know how to do that, so you have to explain to me how to send an invite in chat. <laughs> um, if, are you on one of the other Discord servers that I'm in, though? Um, there's, like, the Tower of Keys one, um, and... I feel like there's another dungeon synth one, um, but yeah, if you're in if you're in one of those, um, shoot me a friend request on Discord. I think I'm just Francis or Francis Roberts with a number that has a four at the beginning of it. Um, 
But yeah, if you're on one of those, uh, shoot me a friend request and I'll send you an invite to my Discord server. This is feeling pretty good though. What, what do you guys think of this uh, of this song right now? I don't know if my Discord server is public, but it's called Old Man Wizard's House is the name of the server. Um, and I don't know how easy or hard it is to search for Discord servers. Like I said, I'm like a total noob on that platform. <laughs> attacked by um, ray guns. This is a bit loud, isn't it? Um, oh, you know what? That should not be done that way. Um... Okay. Oh, cool. Thanks. Jamie and Infected both really like it so far. I'm on the right track then. Oh, I've been, I've been recording that. I didn't realize it. Um, I think that I want to get rid of this. I, I did this as thinking I'd save time and it ended up just being a waste of time. Uh, did the same baseline work? Oh, okay. You've only been in there for four days. So, um, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that uh, I am. Um, this new part here follows the same chords, and I'm checking to see if the same um, the same baseline works, and it seems to. Um, I don't like the baseline, though, so that's the problem. I need to change it up a little bit. I think um, I haven't really figured out how to do that. Did I make this phrase really the wrong length? Oh yeah, I did. This really wants to be, um, it wants this piece to be in there too, I realized. Um, and instead of re-recording it, I'm just gonna be lazy and um, do that. This will probably work. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we'll get away with that. I kind of like it when that happens. Um, you end up with some weird, sort of weirdness that's the result of um, the style of sampling. Uh, that's going to be weird, though. Okay. I'm just going to find a good spot here. Um, And I'm going to time stretch this stuff. And that's probably going to be good now. Hopefully. Sure, 
Terra server with a link. You need to click on the server name at the top left. Click invite people. I don't know if I can do this um, while I'm streaming. Let's see here. Invite. Oh yeah. Here it is, cool. I wonder if I can... <laughs> Does this work? Oh my god, I'm gonna try something here. <laughs> Did that work? Oh my god. Maybe. I think that might be an invite link. Let me know if that works. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and thank you for giving me an easy place for that. I'm sure it's a, if that doesn't work, I'm sure there's an easy way to make it work. Um, like some other option to click, making it a functional link. Um, I kind of want more of this flute goodness. It worked. Cool. Awesome. Well, welcome to the server. Yeah. General rule is just don't be a dick. Um, I'm sure that goes without saying. You've been you've been kind and respectful in the stream. <laughs> Okay. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print this mug so I don't experience that latency. It's really starting to bother me. Um, Perfect dark soundtrack. Printed, that'll be much less of a headache. It's gonna stop bothering me now. Um, it's probably late from the mid. Look at how much latency that is. It's horrible. Okay, that should be fine. Yeah, so much better. It's all tight now. What do you got here? Not a rude person. Trying to. Be <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I, I'm not saying I think you are or anything like that. I. Uh, I'm just saying that I don't know how to set up the auto moderators yet, so I can't make like <laughs> like rules that will kick you out if you say certain things. Um, so far, everyone in there's been really cool, and I've, it, it's made me really like Discord, but I just don't know enough about it yet. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I've been listening to a lot of John Carpenter, so saying that it sounds like something out of an old, old horror movie is just like you. Know, calling me out for what I've been listening to. I just bought um, 
John Carpenter's got a new record um, with his with his son and his nephew, uh, Cody Carpenter. Uh, John Carpenter's son is a in like sort of like a prog, a heavy prog kind of a band. Um, that's pretty cool. It's like instrumental um, rock synthesizer, heavy rock music. And uh, anyway, he's got an album with his dad now, and, um, and I guess John Carpenter's nephew also does music, and it's just like this. It's really cool. It's a really cool album. But um, it's it's a bunch of um, it's called Lost Themes, and it's uh, or Lost Themes three. He does these a lot, I guess. And it's a collection of like themes that didn't make it into movies, um, rearranged for like the band. And it's just I've been wanting to make something like it, and this isn't quite like it, but. Um, I think that's probably what's rubbing off of me and why this is sounding like an old horror movie soundtrack. Um, kind of weird I think that needs to get doubled up and again there. yeah that's pretty cool um, I'm liking it and what does this drum beat feel like in the context here And I think in this spot, I want to bring in um, some more um, hip hop isms. I'm going to record in MIDI overdub and I'm going to see if I can come up with like a. Something like that. I think I, think I like those drum sounds. Yeah, I, I think that'll be cool, actually, especially if it's filtered a little bit. Um, I'm not recording. I am. Huh. I was about to record over all my shit. <laughs> Okay, so um, off the bat, it's absolutely uh, dreadful, right? Um, and I just want to see what this feels like if it's quantized. Did that just... Oh, no, it's just an illusion. Nope, I don't like it. Um, and what can we do about that? Come up with a better pattern, I think, is the only option. Um, I'm just going to experiment with this. I'm going to play along with it on a loop for a bit. This is better.
trappy should we get? Which hat, uh, which hats do you do you all like? One, two. Whoops, that's not two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. That's a mix of one and two. It's a little bit mellower. I think that fits the track better than three. But I like the open on three. Yeah, I think I'm mixing all three. I, I think I'm gonna use all three of them. I'm not sure if I want trap hats, but I um, I want to hear what it sounds like with trap hats. So we're going to record some, um, and we're going to try programming some and seeing which one sounds cooler. Just a rough draft. And um, let's just go in here and think about what we could do to make them cooler. This is annoying that they're all in the same sequence. Um, because is um, Oh, it's kind of good when it's not, um, th that unquantized sound is pretty good. I mean, the, the quantized sound, rather, of the grid. See how that feels. See you later, Jamie. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for watching for so long. Have a good day. <laughs> you know it's gonna be cool if that just drops off. With like a let's see here. 
that one, right? <laughs> Right there, yeah. Cool. We're oh, saying accent the downbeats at a lower volume of every other beat. Oh yeah, good call. That's actually gonna that's gonna help a ton. Um. Yeah, it helps a lot. Actually, like leaving out the um, doing that. This is basically the same idea as that thing we were talking about. So one of the, one of the side chain compression things I like to do is I like to um, to compress my overhead symbols um, using the kick and the snare as the key input when I'm recording a live drum kit to make the um, the the kick and snare punch through a little bit harder. Um, and uh, in this case, since we're programming the drums, we can do that. Um, in the programming. So you're just leaving out uh, beats one, and all the snare and kick beats. Yeah, <laughs> that goes through, that goes hard. Um, oh, accent every four hits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's try that. Okay, yeah, you know what? This is gonna be, um, I'm gonna make these sort of fade out a little bit. Um, whoops. Something like that. Here, I want that triplet. Um, I like this idea, and I'm going to see if it sounds good. I'm not sure if it's going to stay or not, but um, we're going to listen to it. <laughs> okay, here's a little bit of this. There was an extra thing in there. I want to hear this in context because um, I feel like this might be just uh, again um, I never like to focus on one part of a song for too long because I just like will hyper fixate on it and it was something that's super cool and that does not even slightly feel like it belongs in the song <laughs> so I want to hear this from the beginning actually uh, and see if getting here feels good or if um, it's not on the right track Yeah, like a two against three thing for the triple part. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that will sound cool. Let's see if the whole thing works though <laughs> before we get too excited.
something in the flute. What if this, uh... That's subtle. Um, and of course I got fucked up and I forgot we were listening for it in context and changed a bunch of stuff. thing what's going on here oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me <laughs> I recorded that in all of it wow <laughs> that's why the pad was feeling weird and empty it wasn't even there um that was my fault pop in there somewhere. I think it's this. Oh, it couldn't be that. Where are you? Oh, it's right there. It's the mode. Okay, that's cool. You know what? Reverse, oh, reverse snare could be cool. That's a good idea. Let's see if I can find any snares. I think I like it. That kind of goes hard. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's on that's on track. That's cool. Um, I'm gonna find a down tune Lindrum. I think these are some of the fattest sounding. Yeah, this is like the Prince snare. Um, happen. Why is this not playing? It's gonna be loud. Oh god. Um, and it sort of wants to blend over a little bit. And be filtered a little bit. Let's just EQ it. Something like that. That's okay. Uh, I don't know if that's the right sample after all. Um, let's try it in a few spots and just see how it feels. Um, let's mostly see how it feels with this hi-hat part. That needs like a, a riser or something. Um, let's make something. Um, 
Um, riser. And what do I want this coming from? An eight. And that first note is it's on the C. Something like that. Um, and let's record that in here. <laughs> it was like rumbling already. You gotta, I'm gonna chop that out. It looks like a squid, doesn't it? Look at that waveform. Something like that's probably good. Um, and then I want that to be kind of a different one of these guys. Um, and fade out on there. Maybe put some reverb. Um, I actually don't have a reverb. I want, I want a reverb channel on here. Uh, plate. I always like treating my um, workspace like it's a studio um like a hardware studio and have like a um like here's the plate and we can send stuff to the plate um and that helps me um it just sort of makes me feel like i'm you know working in a real place um i like to make these just not really colorful at all and i guess that this um is the where did I put the riser? Here it is. I'm gonna route that to my plate. And the plate actually is gonna get turned out just like everything else. And the riser will too. Let's just see how that feels. <laughs> it's kinda weird. Um, I could do better. Um, I'm gonna leave it for now because I like the idea of it, but I want to redo the sound later. And let's go in the chat here. Um, I do like that a lot. Helps sound better. So, oh, no area. Definitely use the original snare sample. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And the first note is an E flat. It should be a uh, an E flat coming uh, an e, the E flat that is the third of a uh, the minor third of a C minor chord. Um, so I'm using a C because that bone is probably an E flat, right? I hope. <laughs> oh no, no, sorry. It's a it's not an E flat. It's a um, the C sharp. So it's a. The C sharp minor to C major. And then it goes to a, um, an E minor. So that last chord should be a C, a C major right here. Yeah. You know what? Let's just put that in the flutes too. It's like a Looney Tunes. Oh god, I just recorded over that other thing. This combination is going to be weird, but um, I think that it might work. Uh, 
Um, this is going to be weird. Um, let's see here. Um, again, I think it, it might be a lost cause, though. Might do something else. Um, I would call this song... Um, I would... I would... I wouldn't want to call this... Say that this is in a specific key. I think it's a mistake to analyze it that way. Um, if I had to, it's in C-sharp minor. But um, it's... It's... Um, when I write any type of loop looping music, I try to make chord progressions that don't have a like a good um, tonal center. So like I'll I'll do like a um, uh, in this case I'm I'm switching between sort of like C sharp minor and E minor, um, and um, it never sort of stays on one of them long enough to resolve. So it's hard to it's hard to decide that it's in either of those keys because it's basically just a a, a modulation. Um, every every two ish measures, basically. So um, it sort of that that's like where that uh, um horror movie <laughs> horror movie soundtrack vibe comes from. <laughs> wee 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 wee. <laughs> I might have to make that a little bit less intense. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Yeah, you know, it kind of is, it's almost like it's a mode of C harmonic minor, C sharp, uh, it, well, it would be C, C harmonic minor. Um, it'd be like the, like, um, <laughs> what is the, whatever that scale is called, it's like um, the, the harmonic minor, minor that is a mode of, the Phrygian mode of harmonic minor. It's like the Yngwie Malmsteen scale. <laughs> um, there's a term for it, but it's a, it's a mode of harmonic minor. Um, and it's the... Um, yeah, I guess this fits into the C, not C sharp, but the C mode of um, of harmonic minor. So um, it's like this. <laughs> That's the scale, basically. Yeah, it's it's not in a key. <laughs> You're gonna get lost then if you if you key snap this. Um. Yeah, the chord and the chord is kind of kind of weird too. Um, what's up, Mug Jude? Yeah, um, modes. I feel like I don't know very much about them either, to be honest. Um, like definitely not in the way that like a jazz player would study them, um, but I um, I understand them as composition tools, but I think that they can be uh, dangerous to use in that way. They're they're better as improvisation tools, and I don't really know how to use them as improvisation tools. It's going good. How are you? Um, I um, uh, I don't know if you're if you're um, Mug Jude, if you're if you're putting something up for the um or you saw that there's gonna be another crypt hop compilation. Um if you're I don't know if you're gonna make something for that or not, but I think you should. I think it'd be sick. Um But that's what I'm I'm coming up with ideas for my submission for that right now. And I'm actually probably gonna I'm I'm getting a little bit like my ears are getting tired and I'm getting ready for a 
for a break for the night um, to switch over to video games. I think I got some good work done though. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep a lot of this. Um, however, I do want to try modifying this a little bit. I kind of like that flam, actually. Um, hmm. Let's see here. There's something else going on. Nope. Okay. Let's see how this feels. Yeah, this is feeling pretty good. I need to make a, um, I'm not gonna get any more good work done on this. I'm gonna say, um, currently working on hi-hat pattern. Um, yeah, and show on project load. <laughs> The way that pops up and tells me, yells at me next time I come in to work on this. So modes, um, yeah, you know, uh, here, I, I was thinking of doing some videos on like the basics of it. Um, yeah, why not? Um, a good way to think about them is that they are, um, uh, scales that are, um, a different collection of uh, of steps, a different order of steps. So, if that's a major scale, then that's a minor scale using the same set of notes. So that's a collection of. I'm playing just white keys, so C to C, and then eight A on white keys would be a the minor mode, basically. Um, and some people, in some contexts, would call that the Aeolian mode. So each mode would have a name. So major can also be called Ionian mode which sort of implies different harmonic function, but um, the notes are the same, so it's not as terribly important. And uh, essentially what you could do is you can um, change pieces of that. Um, and the easiest way to start is just, you know, white keys, one note to that note, the next octave up. So that's starting D to D, and that's Dorian mode. But if you take those, those uh, intervals and you move them to A, you have a Dorian so it's the same um, the same um, distance between each note and what I'm doing there for Dorian is a minor scale with a raised sixth scale degree so um, if you did uh, Phrygian mode it's a lowered second so instead of it's this and then it has that sort of like weird pivot note Exactly. It's like how C major and A minor are the same notes. That's a, that's that's exactly the, how you can think of it at like a sort of like a basic level of what modes are. That's the the meat and potatoes of of the concept. Um, and um, if you took a like a mode of the like harmonic minor scale, you would take that harmonic minor scale with that augmented second at the top of the scale, and you'd move that around. And a popular one to do with that is um, to put that aug that augmented second as the third interval, so you get that kind of like, um, Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call this good for tonight. Um, oh, you sent a melody idea in the server. Oh shoot. Um, I am going to log off, but I will check that out. And I guess you're in the server now, so um, I'll um, I'll bug you over there. Um, and I probably I might do that later tonight, and I might do that tomorrow morning. 
but I'm my ears are just done for the evening, so um, I am going to be done with music for now. Um, anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, this has been fun, and um, I will um, work on this some more some other time. I might do it on live stream. I might not. Um, in fact, it'll definitely hit you up and um, listen to that melody idea. Um, and maybe maybe we can use it. That could be cool. Doing this as a collab. I really like it when um, the live streams become collaborative like that. So uh, we can talk about that, and maybe that'll happen. Anyway. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in, um, and have a good night, everyone. I'll see you later. <laughs>